Welcome to CXC Math TV and today we're going through the art math, the June 2022 paper. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. So this question, it says, consider the quadratic equation qx squared minus 4px plus pq squared equals 0. Express the sum and products of the roots in terms of e and q. So you have to remember, whenever you're given a quadratic equation in the form ax squared, plus bx plus c equal to 0, then the sum of the roots is minus b over a. In this case, the sum of the roots, in this case, the sum equal to minus b over a. The b right here is 4p, negative 4p. So it's minus negative 4p over a, and a is what? q. So that's the sum. So the sum is just 4p over q. Four p over q. Then now the product. The product is equal to c over a. And c over a it is then 4q squared over q. And 4 cubed square over q, p cubed square mean over q is just p times q. That's the product. And that is it. Two marks, three marks for that. Whoa. Lovely. Now they said determine the value of q such that the sum of the roots is equal to the product of the roots. So if the sum is equal to the product, then what they're telling us is then 4p over q is equal to p times q. Then guess what happened? Since these two are equal, then clearly realize that the Q, the P is cancel on me. So let me change this color. I don't like the blue color, I like the red color. So changing it back to red, realize that the P's would cancel. And I think this team is just a little too small. Put it to three. So since the P's cancel, then now we just have four over Q is equal to Q. So we'll cross multiply. So 4 is equal to q squared, which means that q must be equal to 2. Now, how do I know it is just 2? Because it cannot be plus or minus 2. They said, remember, q and p are positive integers. All right, so since it's positive integers, q can only be 2. <laughs> now, it says if the sum of the roots is 20, use the answer previously to find p. So now they're telling us the sum is equal to 20. But remember the sum we said was what 4p over q. So 4p over q, but q is 2. So it's 4p over 2 equal 20. 4 over 2 is 2. So 2p is equal to 20. And so therefore, p must be equal to 10. That's it. That's the answer. Now it says, hence give the quadratic equation in terms of numerical coefficients. So since we find q is 2, so now it becomes 2x squared minus p we said is 10. p is what? 10. p is 10. So 4 times 10 is 40, so minus 40x. Then now q is 2, 2 squared is 4. And 4 times 10 is 40. This is now plus 40 is equal to 0. That's it in terms of numerical coefficient. Next part. It says a series is given by, this is the series. Show that the series is geometric. Now a series is geometric if it has a common ratio. So a series is geometric, we can tell them a series is geometric 
if it has a common ratio. That's when a series is geometric. So now this series, we can realize, we can break it up. I'm going to look at positive terms. I love to only look at positive terms, then look at my negative terms. We can rearrange this series as follow. We can rearrange it as 25 plus 1 plus 1 over 25 plus the positives would continue minus the negative terms and the negative terms would be 5 plus 1 over 5 plus and it continue. Now realize from this piece, common ratio would be what? 1 over 25 and it's the same as 1 over 25 over 1. So realize this is still giving us 1 over 25. Over this side, realize the common ratio is what? 1 over 5 divided by 5, which is still 1 over 25. So that showed that, hence, it is geometric. It's geometric since it have what? 1 constant common ratio. And the common ratio is 1 over 25. That's it. Now the next part, it says calculate the sum to infinity of the series. Now, sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. Now here's the thing though. Because we have, to, we have to work out the sum to infinity for the positive part first, then minus the sum to infinity of the negative part. So in this case, the sum to infinity, so that implies now the sum to infinity, let's start with the positive part. So we'll call it sum to infinity 1. A, which is 25 over 1 minus R, which is 1 over 25. That would work out to be, punch that in a calculator. Or let's just do everything in one step, right? We don't need to be doing the sum to infinity 1 and the sum to infinity 2. Right, just in the interest of time, sum to infinity is 25 over 1 minus 1 over 25. That would be for the positive part here. Minus, for the, the next part now, the sum to infinity is A, the 5 over 1 minus 1 over 25. Now we can just put all of this in our calculator. In the interest of time, you always don't want to be, you don't want to be wasting time. So, you know, we're just going to do it in one step and save ourselves some time. Yeah, so doing it in one step, I bring out the calculator. Twenty five over one minus one over twenty five minus five over one minus one over twenty five. And that is one twenty five over six. So that's a sum to infinity. Sum to infinity is 125 over 6, or some might say 20 and 5 over 6. That is it. Nice. The next part now, the end question one, it says, a recent university graduate was offered a starting salary. Anytime you're dealing with sequence and series, remember starting value is your A. So your starting value 720,000. That's A. Then now it says, and it increases $5,000 every year after. So that's what your common difference. So D is 5,000. Now it says, determine the number of years that it would take for annual salary to be 20% greater than her salary in the first year. So we need to figure out when is her salary going to be 20% greater than what it is in the first year so the salary that you have right we don't know which year it's going to take right that salary when is it going to be 20 greater than greater than let me not put greater than or equal to i should just put strictly greater than right so when is that salary that you get is going to be greater than 
20% more than this, right? And we can work out, you know, 1.2 times our original starting salary. That's all we're saying, which year it's going to take, right? So that's what we need to work out now. So remember, now you can work out what 20% of 720,000 would be. So work out that 20% of that amount, 0 0.2 times 720,000. Then you add it back to 720,000. So that is 800,000 and 64. This is what we need our salary to be, right? Greater than our salary needs to be greater than this. So let me not put 20%, let me rather put 120% of 720,000. So now, now we need to remember arithmetic progression for Tn. Tn is what? A plus N minus 1 D is greater than 864,000. Now, A remember was 720,000, so we can bring that over here. D is what? 5,000. So in that case, we're getting 5,000 in bracket N minus 1 is greater than or equal to 864,000 minus 720,000. So we do our subtraction. That is 144,000. 144,000. And then we divide by 5,000. We divide by 5,000, so we get N minus 1, right? Divided both sides by 5,000 straight away. So now you put that into your calculator, divide it by 5,000, and we get 28.8. So if N minus 1 is greater than 28.8, then N is greater than 29.8, and so N is equal to 30. That's the next number bigger than 29.8. To determine the number of years, it would take 30 years. Imagine 30 years for a 20% increase in salary. That is crazy. So you can tell them it will take her, it will take a whole of 30 years for a 20% salary increase. Don't know why it came out that small. I'm going to have to edit it. It shouldn't be this small. Um, let me see why that is. I'm not sure as to why it's coming out this small. It really shouldn't. But this is saying, as you can see, it will take a whole of 30 years for a 20% salary increase. I'm not sure why the text is coming out that small, so not to try to fix it. All right, question two now. Question two, it says, when the polynomial expression, so I like to define my polynomial expression. So let p of x be equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus cx plus d. I like to define my polynomial expression. When it is divided by x plus one, minus two, it leaves the same remainder of 64. So in that case, when we set x plus one to be zero, we're getting x is negative one. So that means p of negative one is equal to 64. So plug in negative one, that's two times negative one cubed, minus three times negative one square, minus c times negative one plus d is giving us 64. This is minus 1 cubed is minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. Minus 1 squared is positive 1 times 3, that's minus 3. So that's minus 5. Plus C plus D equals 64. So C plus D is equal to 69. So we have one equation. Now the second equation is, when you set X minus 2 to be 0, you get X is 2. So P of 2 is also 64. So... 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 square minus c times 2 plus d is equal to 64. 2 cubed is 8, 8 2 is 16. 2 cubed, just want to make sure 2 cubed is 
8, 8, 2 is 16. 2, 4 is, 2 square is 4, 4, 3 is 12, minus 2C plus D equals 64. Now 16 minus 12, I believe that is 4, and you bring it to the other side, it becomes negative 4, and 64 minus, 64 minus 4 is 60. This is minus 2C plus D equals 60. So now we have our second equation. Now, I'm really not in the mood to multiply through by anything, so I'm just going to I'm just going to subtract them. So this is a minus 2c plus d equals 60. If I subtract them, I get c minus 2c is 3c. 69 minus 60 is 9. So c is equal to 3. Once I get c is equal to 3, then obviously d must be 66, because 3 plus 66 is 69. That's it. Easy. So, it has show this. Now, if you have one of these calculator, please don't do this. Please. If you just put this in a calculator, root 25 over root 45, that's not going to get you the full mark. What they want you to see is actually show the working. Tell them root 25 over root 45 you're telling them this is the root of 5 times the root of 5 over the root of 45 is what the root of 9 times the root of 5 because we break up 45 as 9 times 5 then you're going to tell them that root 5 cancel root 5 so this is now root 5 over root 9 but root 9 is 3 so this is root 5 over 3 that's how you show them the full work. Here. Please don't just put it in the calculator and think you're going to get your full marks. Now they give us this um, expression here and they say put it in this form. Um, I'm going to do it both ways. For those who like to complete the square and those who like to um, use the formula method. So using the completed square method, g of x is equal to, first thing is you factor out 6. When you factor out 6, you're left back with x squared plus 2x. Put back here plus 18. Then now, this is going to become, you drop off the square. Please stop doing that then. Now you drop off the square, so it becomes x plus half the coefficient of 2, which is 1, square. Then you subtract back the number here, square. Then you put your plus 18 back. Now you expand in the bracket to get expand back in the 6. That's 6 in bracket. X plus 1 square minus 6 plus 18. So in completed square form, it is 6 in bracket. X plus 1 square minus 6 plus 18 is plus 12, I believe. And that is it. That's G of X when you complete the square. Now, many of us, many of us are like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't know it that way. No problem. Many of us know it using the H and K formula. H is B over 2A. So A is 6, B is 12, and C is negative 18. So B over 2A is 12 over 2 times 6, which is equal to 12 over 12, which is 1. So we'll get our H. Then now we know k as c minus b square over 4a, right? Or some know it as 4ac minus b square over 4a. It doesn't matter, right? So now we're using this formula, c negative 18 minus b square over 4 times a. I'll put that in the calculator. Negative 18 minus fraction button b square 12 square over 4 times a we get negative 24 ah so i made an error somewhere i don't know why i changed this to plus 18 and if you look back in the question it had a minus from the get-go so it's so a good thing I did it both ways, guys. As you can see, I changed this to a plus 
and the question didn't give me plus the question had a minus so this was a minus here this should have been a minus i don't know how i saw a plus guys my apologies i saw a plus and now i had to change it back to a minus so i have to make the necessary adjustments but it's a similar thing with the factorization method it's just that i saw a plus when there was no plus there it was a minus so this was supposed to be a minus a minus minus 24. so with this method notice you're still going to get the same answer g of x being a 6 in bracket x plus h h we said was 1 square plus a and k is minus 24. any way you want to use it's fine number two find the roots using the method above so remember roots meaning you're solving g of x equals zero but they say using the formula above so you have to use six in bracket x plus one square minus 24 equals zero bring over to get 24 is equal to six in bracket x plus one all square then you know what to do next you divide both sides by six dividing both sides by six you get x plus one all square is equal to four so when you square root it now we're getting x plus one is equal to the positive square root of four or x plus one is equal to the negative square root of four so we're getting x plus one is equal to positive two or x plus one is equal to negative three from that we're getting x must be one or x must be negative three these are our answers x equal one or x equal negative three now when you do questions like these always check your answer how you going to check your answer? Go back to the original equation, put in x as 1 and see if you get 0. So check it. 6 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1 minus 18. It's supposed to get 0. Bam, we get 0. Check it with negative 3 too. It's supposed to get 0 again. We get our 0. So we know we're correct. Good. Now them say hence sketch a graph. Now we can sketch a graph because what do we know? We know the minimum point. Just to write down what we know. We know the minimum point. And the minimum point, remember, is negative h k. So from this question, the minimum point is negative 1, negative 24. So that's our minimum point. We know our roots and we know our y-intercept. So now we can go ahead and sketch a graph. Now put on i like to start with my minimum point but i'm just putting on the axis first remember it's a sketch it's not going to be perfect all right so bear with me my sketch is not perfect. It's just a sketch. And the graph they give is also lean. That's crazy. That's crazy. No problem. So this is our y axis or x axis. The minimum point was negative 1. I'm going to use this as negative 1, negative 20. Minimum point was what? Negative 1, negative 24. So 4, 6, 4, 8, 12, 16, 24. This is not quite working. Okay. I need to move up the axis by one little bit. I know it's a sketch, but I want it to be relatively accurate. Anytime I give you a graph paper, try to let it be relatively accurate. Negative 1, negative 24 right here. This is negative 24. That's our lowest point on the graph. Now, the next thing is the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept is negative 18. So, this would be negative 20. This would be negative 16. So, in the middle is the negative 18. This is negative 18. All right. Then, next thing is the roots. What are the roots? The roots are positive 1 and negative 3. So, the roots are positive 1 and negative 3. So, this is 0. 
this is positive 1, negative 2, negative 3. Right? So now I can give them a sketch. So these are my roots. So I like to put on the critical points first and then I draw the graph. I know my graph look awful. I know. It's awful. That's G of X. Just to show them, see it here, this is the negative 1, negative 24. That's a turning point. The y intercept negative 18, the roots negative 3, and positive 1. My sketch is awful, but make sure yours is better. Cool. We're moving on to question 3, which is section 3. It says the equation of a circle is given by this. Determine the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. So first thing we need to go from general to standard. So group up the x terms first. That x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 8y plus 10. That's equal to 0. From that now we'll complete the square among the x terms. So this is x plus 2 squared. Subtract 2 squared plus. This is now y then complete the square among the y terms. This is y minus 4 square subtract 4 square plus 10 equal 0. Remember how you complete the square? You drop off the square, drop off the x, half the coefficient of 4 is 2, then you subtract the square of the number there. Drop off the square, drop off the y, half the coefficient of 8, 4, then you subtract the square of the number right here. That's all. So in that case, it becomes x plus 2 square plus y minus 4 square is equal to, bring it over, this is 2 square plus 4 square minus 10. That is 4 plus 16 is 20, 20 minus 10 is 10. So this is x plus 2 square plus y minus 4 square is equal to 10. So in that case, the center is, set this be 0, you get negative 2. Set this be 0, you get y equal 4. So the center is negative 2, 4. And the radius is equal to the square root of the number. So square root 10 unit. That's it. Now it says, determine the equation of the tangent to the circle at minus 5, 5. So I love when we picture the circle, I always draw a little circle as my guide, my little guide. Because first thing I know is that the center of the circle is minus 2, 4. So minus 5, 5 is somewhere up here. That's the point P. I want the equation of the tangent at P. Now to find the tangent at P, first thing we have to find is what? The normal. So this is the tangent. First thing we have to do is find the normal. This is the normal. So the gradient of the normal is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The gradient of the normal is 1 over minus and minus become plus minus 5 plus 2. So that is 1 over negative 3. So therefore, the gradient of the tangent, which is minus 1 over the gradient of the normal, that's now positive 3. Once we get the gradient of the normal, now the once you get the gradient of the tangent, I mean, remember now the equation is given by, you can use either y equal mx plus c, or you can use y minus y value at the point of tangency equal gradient of the tangent in bracket x minus the x value at the point of tangency. So it's y minus 5 equal 3 in bracket x minus negative 5. So that is y minus 5 equal 3x and then minus and minus will come plus and then 3 times 5 is 15. So in that case to finish we get our tangent is just y equal 3x plus 20. That's the answer. So it's really up to you in terms of how you wanted to do the question. Now it says these the vectors OX are such that OX is this and OY is that. Show that the two vectors are perpendicular. 
Now, I don't know why this is so much marks. This, this is saying five marks, but two vectors are perpendicular if their dot product is zero. That's all. So, two, come on, why is the text still so small? Let me increase the font size and see. So, I hear it is it's a little better. Two vectors are perpendicular if the dot product is zero, implying the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees. That's what we need to show, that these two vectors are perpendicular if their dot product is zero. In that case now, ox dot oy, that is 4, 1, dot, 1, negative 4. This works out to be 4 times 1 plus 1 times negative 4, which is 0. Now, since we get 0 now, the dot product is 0. Um, I would stop here, even though this is sufficient. I don't think that is sufficient to get 5 marks. So I guess what we will do is show them that the angle is indeed 90. So now we can tell him that the magnitude of OX is now the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 17. And the magnitude of OY is the same, square root of 17. So now we can tell him the cos of theta is equal to OX dot OY over the magnitude of OX times the magnitude of OY. So now we're telling them that the cos of theta is equal to 0 over the square root of 289 because root 17 times root 17 is root 289. So that means cos theta is 0 and so theta is cos inverse of 0 which is 90. So to me that is sufficient now to show them that indeed OX and OY are perpendicular. So just to give them a statement and tell them hence, they are perpendicular. So always give them a statement, hence, they are orthogonal. Orthogonal means perpendicular. All right. Now this question. This question says, the diagram below not drawn to scale shows a chord AB with subtends an angle of 0.5 radians. And they tell us that the radius is 10. Given that the area of the triangle is that formula, find the area shaded. No problem. Now the area shaded, right? The area shaded, that's just equal to the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. Now the area of the sector is a half r squared theta, and the area of the triangle is a half r squared sine theta. So in that case, it is a half the radius is 10 to half 10 squared times theta. Theta is 0 0.5 minus a half 10 squared times the sine of theta and the sine of 0 0.5. But remember, your calculator needs to be in radians. They put your calculator in radians for me. Change it to radians. So now that it's in radians, let me make sure it's in radians again. Press 4. It's in radians. Now we have half 10 square times 0 0.5 minus half 10 square times the sine of 0 0.5. So in that case, we're getting 1.028. I'm just going to work with 1.03. That's the area shaded centimeters square. That's the area shaded. This question, it says, show that cos 2 theta is this. Now, that's easy. Cos 2 theta, that's our left-hand side, is now equal to what? We know cos 2 theta is the same as the cos of theta plus theta. Now, using the compound angle formula, we can use the compound angle formula to then say this is this is cos theta, cos theta, cos theta, 
minus sine theta sine theta in that case now in that case now cos times cos is cos squared so this is now cos square theta minus sine square theta and in this case now in this case stop it in this case now we have to remember now that remember sine square theta is what cos sine square theta is 1 minus cos square theta then minus and minus become plus so this is now cos square theta minus 1 plus cos square theta and cos square theta plus cos square theta is 2 cos square theta minus 1 that's the right hand side and that's it finish now it says hence solve the equation hence mean using what we just did if we're solving cos 2 theta plus cos theta plus 1 equals 0 we need to utilize the fact that cos 2 theta is 2 cos square theta minus 1 plus cos theta plus 1 equal to 0. Clearly, the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel each other. That leaves 2 cos square theta plus cos theta equal to 0. Now, straight away, we realize that they have what in common. These two equate the two terms, I mean, they have cos theta in common. So, I'm going to factor out the cos theta that they have in common and we're left back with 2 cos theta plus 1 equals 0. So, once we factor out cos theta, we realize that it's either cos theta equals 0 or it is a 2 cos theta plus 1 equals 0. If cos theta is equal to 0, you draw your circle, right? And then you need your, your two answers, all schools each crab. So you need the answers in the first and the fourth quadrant by taking cos inverse of zero and you take cos inverse of zero and you get your pi by two. And so your fourth quadrant answer, remember the fourth quadrant is two pi minus. So two pi minus pi by two is three pi by two. So the answer down here would be 2 pi minus your pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. Now for over here now, we draw our circle and let's work it out. If we bring over the 1 and divide by 2, that same cos theta is negative a half. Cos is negative where? Cos is negative in all school teach crap. So cos is negative in the second and the third quadrant. So first, let's take cos inverse of a half. So if you take cos inverse of a half, you're going to get your pi by 3, I believe. You get your pi by 3, yes. So we get our pi by 3. But because we need second quadrant and third quadrant, remember this is pi, pi minus and this is pi plus. The theta then is pi minus pi by 3 and pi plus pi by 3. So this would work out to be 2 pi by 3 or 4 pi by 3. So now to list out all the answers, all the answer is theta is pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 2 pi by 3, and 4 pi by 3. Those are all the answers. Nice. Easy question. Hey! Nice. That finished question three. <laughs> question four, we move on to calculus. So section three, and it says, given that f of x is x times five minus x all squared, determine f prime prime. Now, the first thing I realize is I'm not going to be using um, product rule. I realize that I can just, first I need to simplify f of x. This is x times first term square, twice the product of the two second term squared. So expanding that's now 25x minus 10x squared plus x cubed. That's f of x. So now I can go ahead and find f prime of x and f prime of x would be 25 
minus 2 times 10 is 20x. And then carry down the power, subtract 1 from the power, that's 3x squared. So now f double prime of x now is, when I differentiate a constant, I get 0, minus differentiate 20x, I get 20. Then I differentiate 3x squared, I get plus 6x. So now I finish f double prime of x is equal to 6x minus 20. That's your answer. Again, you didn't have to do it that way. The alternate method is really long. For those who would have wanted to use product rules, so some persons might have said f prime of x is equal to keep the first times the derivative of the second, and then they use chain rule to differentiate this, plus keep the second times the derivative of the first, and we'll differentiate x to get 1. So in that case, f prime of x. I'm just showing the alternate way here for those who would have, you know, wanted to do it this way. Negative x times 2 is negative 2x in bracket 5 minus x plus 5 minus x squared. This is now expanded to in minus and minus is plus, so that is x and x is x squared, and that's 2x squared. Minus times positive is negative 10x plus 5 minus x r squared. Then now f prime prime of x would be, we differentiate, we get 4x minus 10. Now we differentiate this, we carry down the power. We subtract 1 from the power. Then we multiply by the derivative in the bracket. That's 4x minus 10 plus, this is now plus Negative 1 times negative x is positive x times 2, that's 2x. 2 times 5 is 10 times 1, that's negative 10. This would give us the 6x minus 20. So depending on how you wanted to do it, I do it. Method 2, and we have method 1. My preferred approach is method 1. You expand and then differentiate. It's a differentiate each of the following with respect to x. So, we'll differentiate 2 sine 3x plus cos x. When you differentiate sine, you get cos. So you get 2 cos 3x, but then you have to divide by the derivative of the 3x, which is 3. Then when you differentiate cos, you get minus sine x. We're done. Now, this one now, we're going to differentiate. We have to differentiate it using chain rule. Product rule, I mean, and chain rule. So we're going to have to use product and chain rule. So this one is usually a little bit lengthy. So remember, to differentiate it, you keep the first. Then you multiply it by the derivative of the second. When you differentiate x plus 2, you get 1. Plus keep the second, x plus 2. Then you multiply it by the derivative of the first. When you differentiate the first, you have to use chain rule. Carry down the power. Then you subtract 1 from the power, and you multiply by the derivative inside the bracket, and the derivative of 2x is 3. So now we just need to simplify 1 plus 2x cubed plus x plus 2 times, in this bracket is 2 times 3 is 6. So that 6 you can put here, 6 in bracket, 1 plus 2x uh, squared, because remember multiplication is associative and commutative. Now we can factor out 1 plus 2x squared and we're left back with 1 plus 2x from this piece. And then from this piece now, we have plus 6 in bracket x plus 2. Then now simplify in the bracket, so that's 1 plus 2x squared in bracket. Now 2x plus 6x is 8x, and then 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So that is that. Now this says we need to determine the nature of the stationary points. To determine the nature of the stationary points, so in that case now, dy by dx give us stationary points. So dy by dx is equal to 
we differentiate x cubed, we get 3x squared. Minus we differentiate 4x squared, we get 8x. And we differentiate 4x, we get plus 4. Now, at a stationary point, at stationary point, we have to remember that dy by dx is equal to 0. So now we need to go ahead and solve this equation equal to 0. 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equal to 0. So now that we're solving this equals 0, um, on the straight away factorize it. This is now 3x x. Let's see. Signs are the same, both being negative. So 2 and 2. Signs are the same, both negative. Minus, minus. Let's see. Yes, that would work out. So this is giving us x is 2 over 3, or x equal 2. But remember they said, determine the stationary points. So they need points. When you need a point, they need the x and the y value. So to find the corresponding y value, you're going to insert the x into the original equation. Inserting the x in the original equation for y, 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2, that gives us, oh, that give us 0 when x is 2. Then insert 2 over 3 now in the original equation. over 3 cube minus 4 times 2 over 3 square plus 4 times 2 over 3 that gives us 32 over 27 over here y is 32 over 27 so we can tell them the stationary points now you have to give them as coordinates so the stationary points are 2 over 3 comma 32 over 27 and 2 0. That's the answer. Cool. Now the next part says providing details determine the nature of each stationary point. Now I'm going to show you the two ways. The two ways to do this question, method one is by proof of sketch. This is a sketch method. So doing a sketch sketch method, right? A sketch method. This right here has a it's a cubic equation with a maximum and a minimum point. And in this case, now anytime a is greater than zero, it in this case the graph will look like this. It start with a max and end with a minimum. So the graph look like this. Now it start with a maximum and end with a minimum. Then now we have to look at which y value was bigger. The 32 over 27 is bigger. So therefore, this maximum point corresponds to the bigger y value. So 2 over 3, 32 over 27. And this right here corresponds to the smaller value, which is 2, 0. Now, 2, 0 is also at a root. So therefore, this is the x-axis. Uh -huh. Now, since that is x-axis, um what else yeah so in that case now this is just a sketch only thing i have to do is put on the y-axis maybe i need to draw my x-axis a little bit better This is a little suspicious. I just want to check something again. 2 cube minus 4 times 2 square plus 4 times. So I just want to make sure it's a rule. Yes, it is indeed a rule. That's a graph, right? Something like this. This is just a schematic, right? Remember, it's not, it's not perfect, right? It's not perfect. So now this is our schematic of it. So in that case, we could tell them. The minimum stationary point is 2, 0, and the maximum stationary point is 2 over 3, comma 32 over 27. So always remember the bigger y value, maximum stationary point. The lesser y value, minimum stationary. Now, let's say you didn't know to do the sketch. You could have also done the 
the calculus, the second derivative test. Now, the second derivative test, d2y by dx squared. First thing we have to find that, that would be 6x minus 8. Then now we're going to put in when x is 2. At x equal to, we get d2y by dx squared is equal to 6 times 2 is 12 minus 8, which is 4, which is greater than 0. When it's greater than 0, it is a minimum stationary point. So 2, 0 is minimum stationary point. And then now we put in 2 over 3. At, at 2 over 3, we get the second derivative, d2y by dx squared is 2 over 3 times 6. That is 12 over 3, which is 4, and 4 minus 8 is negative 4, which is less than 0. So then we tell them that 2 over 3, 32 over 27, is a maximum stationary point. So that's the second derivative test, and this is proved by sketching. So any way you do it would be acceptable. That's why I said providing details. It don't matter how you do it. The details could be the graph. The details could be the second derivative test. Wow! Question five, integration time. So now they want us to integrate this with respect to theta. So integrating with respect to theta, let's go ahead and do that. So integrate with respect to theta. When we integrate cos, you get sine. So four sine theta minus when you integrate sine, you get negative cos. That become plus 6 cos theta plus a constant of integration. Let's call our constant. I don't want to call the constant theta. I'll call the constant. Since we're dealing with degrees, I'll call the constant phi. So our constant of integration is phi. Right? So we can tell them where phi is our integration constant. All right, so in that case, now we need to evaluate this. We need to evaluate this. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So to evaluate this now, first thing we need to do is integrate. Add one to the power. Divide by the power. Then multiply by the derivative in the bracket. Now we're going from one to two. So now we input the two and input the one. So that is now, first thing, let me just pretty it up a bit. So this is three minus x cubed over negative three. I'm going from one to two. Inserting in the two, that's three minus two cubed over negative three minus three minus two. Well, when x is one now, three minus one cubed over negative three. We work that out. This part now, this would be 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 cube is 1. So that's 1 over negative 3 minus this part. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 cube is 8. Just want to make sure 2 cube is 8. So that is 8 over minus 3. Minus and minus will become plus. So now I have. 1 over negative 3 minus 8 over negative 3. And we get 7 over 3. This is giving us 7 over 3 for answer. 7 over 3. All right, this question now, it says determine the area bounded by the region for the curve, the x-axis, y-axis, and the line x equal to. Now, anytime you have a question like this, I want you to picture the curve. I always picture it, y-intercept 5. So it frown, the graph frown and looks something like this. Now we need to integrate up to the point where x is equal to 2. So the x and y-axis is right here. So we're integrating from zero to two. So the area is the integral from zero to two. 
curve. That's all. We're not doing anything special. So in that case, now we're going to just integrate. So integrate, this is now 5x plus 5x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. And we're going from 0 to 2. So in, in now, the 2, this becomes 5 times 2 plus 5 times 2 squared over 2 minus 2 cubed over 3. Minus will input the 0. We'll input 0. All of that is just 0. 5 times 0. 5 times 0. 0 cubed. That's all 0. So the area works out to be 10 plus 2 squared is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Minus 8 over 3. Put that in the calculator. That's 20 minus 8 over 3. Area is just 52 over 3 units square. That's it. Nice so far, it's really nice. No stress so far. This part now, they tell us that a particle moves in a straight line so that t seconds after passing through the fixed point, its acceleration is this. When t equal to, the particle has a velocity of 4 and a displacement of 6 meters from the fixed point O. Determine the velocity when t is 4. First thing is, they gave us acceleration. Always remember, velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to time. So we integrate 3t minus 1 with respect to time. So we get 3t squared over 2 minus t plus our constant of integration. It's called the constant of integration um, v1. Now, in this case, now they told us when they told us when the time is two, the velocity is four. So in that case, when t equal to t equal four. So in that case, now when t is two, t is four. So I'll put four is equal to three times two square over two minus 2 plus v1. That will give us our integration constant. 2 square is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. 3 to 6. Let me just put in the calculator because I, um, I lost track of what I was saying. Sorry about that. I lost track of what I was saying. So I put that in the calculator and I get 4. This is saying 4 is equal to 4 plus v1. The v1 is definitely 0. Since v1 is 0, then that means our velocity formula is just 3t squared over 2 minus t. But we need the velocity when time is 4. But when t is equal to 4, we'll just punch that in the formula now. So the velocity is 3 times 4 squared over 2 minus 4. So we'll put that in the formula now. 3 times 4 squared over 2 minus 4, that's 20. Therefore, the velocity is 20 meters per second. Four second. Ah. That finish up question 5. Question 6, Statistics and Probability. So it says, at school canteen, 80% of students purchase chips. 80% purchase chips. 55% purchase chicken. So, chips is which letter? Chips is C, and 80% purchase chips. And it says 55% purchase chicken. Up here is 55%. Now, of the students who purchase chicken, 11% do not purchase chips. The chips is a popular one. And they say that 11% purchase, in other words, they're telling us 11% purchase chicken only. So in this case, it's 44 they have in common. 
then what else they told us they told us remember that 80 percent purchased chicken that means 36 percent purchased chicken only when you add it it should give you about the 80. now we just need to put on what's on the complement on the outside if you add 36 and 44 and 11 that's giving you 91 so nine percent is missing so that means you have persons nine percent who don't purchase anything don't purchase chicken or chips that's it four marks for that determine the probability that a student was not random only purchase chicken only or chips only so purchasing chicken only or chips only that's just equal to 36 percent plus the 11 percent it cannot include both remember it says only chicken only or chips only so it cannot include both or means just here chicken only chips only now there's another way to do this to do a only or b only there's a formula for it so the probability of a only or b only there's a formula for it it's just the probability of a plus the probability of b minus two times the probability of a intersect b we look more at this formula in applied math in cape but let's say you just wanted to know it you could so it would be the 80 percent plus the 55 percent minus two times the intersection two times 44 and this will give you the same answer so you put that in a calculator 80 plus 55 minus 2 times 44 if you wanted to use the applied math method then you'd still get the same 47 percent that is it okay now this one now we want the probability of a intersect b now the probability of a intersect b remember this is now equal to the probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a union b that is it so in this case it is stop disappearing b you see the b keeps disappearing so in this case now it's equal to a quarter plus 3 over 5 minus 7 over 10 and you punch that into your calculator so we punch that in our calculator a quarter plus 3 over 5 minus 7 over 10 and we get 3 over 20 that's a probability of a intercept b nice three marks for doing absolutely nothing now the next piece on the probability of a given b now the probability of a given b is the probability of a intersect b divided by the probability of b so that is 3 over 20 divided by the probability of b which is 3 over 5 and we do that now so we have 3 over 20 divided by 3 over 5 which is a quarter Three marks are doing absolutely nothing. Now it says state with reason whether A and B are independent events. Now, yes, they are independent events. Look at it. They're independent events. So we're going to tell them yes. Since the probability of A given B, since the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of a that implies probability of a times the probability of b is equal to the probability of a intersect b so we can tell them hence a and b are independent so that's it so that's a reason since the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, then the probability of A times the probability of B is the probability of A intersect B. So yes, they are independent events. And we're done with that. Next part now. 
we need to construct a stem and leaf diagram. Now, I'm just going to try to make it as neat as possible. So notice the lowest grade is 30 and the highest grade is 98. So in our stem, in our stem, the lowest grade is 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Right? So in that case now that's our stem and this is our leaf. So in that case now, right, in that case now our stem. 30, 35, 39, 42, 45, 45, 52, 59, 61, 61, 65, 69. Now we read 70 now, that's 70, 71, 75, 77, 79. Now we read 80, we have 81, 83, 83, 85, 87, 89. Now we have 90, 90, 95, 98. Now we'll give them your key. You have to tell them that 7 slash 0 means 70. So that's our key. Cool. Now it says state 1, advantage of the stem and leaf. The stem and leaf, it allows us to do what? Sort the data. So it sorts the data. That's one advantage. Now, you could also tell them that the stem and leaf allow you to identify outliers. You can tell them that the stem and leaf allows you to identify median and mode easily. All right, those are just a few. All right, those are three we can state off the top of our head easily. All right. Now, stem and leaf, you can say it allows you to see distribution, but not necessarily. You can't tell straight away whether it's left skewed or right skewed. So it depends. You can see skewedness when it's a little obvious from the stem and leaf. So I wouldn't want to be going in that direction. Now it says state the range. Remember the range is highest minus lowest. So the range is equal to the highest minus the lowest. That is 68 marks. Now it says this is the data displayed below. State two distinct observations seen from the data. So state two, remember it says two. So from the data, we can state that the interquartile range is 85 minus 52, which is, I think that is 33 marks. Just to be sure, I don't wanna make any calculation error. 85 minus 52, yeah, 33. Then another distinct observation we identified was the median is equal to 71 marks. Maybe we can tell them that the highest is 98, the lowest is 30. Just to tell them a few, right? We told them one, two, three, four. We told them four distinct observations, right? And that completes the admat paper, so you realize it wasn't a bad paper, right? It wasn't a bad paper. Finish. Finish the paper, right? Really nice. And that was Admats 2022.